This video is going to talk about returns to scale in a standard Cobb-Douglas production function. So currently we are looking at a production function where y is our total output, and the Cobb-Douglas production function that we are going to be working with is a times k to the alpha times l to the beta, where a is our total factor productivity, k is our capital stock, l is our overall labor, we have our alpha and our betas up here, which are our exponents, which are showing the portion of national income that go towards capital and go towards labor. So the question we want to ask is what are those returns to scale? Meaning that if I multiply my inputs by a certain amount, what will happen to my output? So our inputs here are K and L. So let's go ahead and multiply every. Let's multiply that k and l by um, by t. So we have our right side is a times we have k times t raised to the alpha, and we have l times t raised to the beta. And that means our output is going to equal a times. We're going to take these this exponent right. We're going to take this exponent and we're going to feed it through. So we have k to the alpha, t to the alpha. We're going to have l to the beta, t to the beta. We're going to take our t's and we're going to combine those and bring those to the front. So we're going to have t. And as a reminder, right, if I have two exponents, if they're multiplied together, we are going to add those exponents. So this would be t alpha plus beta. And what we're left with is we're left with a times k to the alpha l to the beta. And what we can notice, right, is this right here was our original output. So what that means is when we multiply our inputs by a certain amount t, our output ends up being multiplied by t raised to the alpha plus beta. So what exactly does this mean? So what we have here is we have t raised to the alpha plus beta multiplied by our output. So what exactly does this mean? When we multiply our inputs by some amount t, our output represented by y is multiplied by t raised to the alpha plus beta. This is going to result in three different options. One where alpha plus beta is equal to one. This is what we're gonna call constant returns to scale meaning that when I multiply my inputs by t, my output is exactly multiplied by t. A lot of times you'll hear this say like, if I double my inputs, output doubles. We could also have it where alpha plus beta is greater than one. This would be increasing returns to scale, where if I multiply my inputs by t, my output is greater than t, it's multiplied by greater than t, so if I double my inputs, my output more than doubles. We could also have alpha plus beta being less than one, which would be uh, decreasing returns to scale, meaning that when I multiply my inputs by t, my output is multiplied by less than t. So if I double my inputs, my output less than doubles. I do wanna put a note here, which we will talk about in a future video and future lesson, that alpha and beta beta are both going to be between 0 and 1, right? So if you remember from earlier in this video, we talked about the definition of alpha and beta being the share of the overall national income going towards capital and labor. So they have to be some sort of percentage, meaning it has to fall between 0 and 1. If you're reading your textbook, our current textbook is always assuming that we have constant returns to scale. And in fact, they're going to use in your textbook, they're going to use y equals a 
k.3 l to the point 7. However, I always like to make sure that my notes are a little different from the textbook. So we will be using just the generic a k to the alpha l to the beta. Sometimes if we want to assume CRS, constant returns of scale, we might say this is y equals a capital raised to alpha l raised to the 1 minus alpha, which then tells us for sure that the two exponents add up to 1.